coming through here, and then it's coming through here, and then it's coming through there, and over there, and everywhere. <laughs> Let there be light. And God said, and so it was. <laughs> and boy, ever since then, everyone's been ducking in the shade. But I actually love the light. I enjoy watching the plants as they adjust themselves to moving and following the sun. It's kind of like what we should be doing, adjusting ourselves to following the sun. The sun of God knows. Streams in the desert has always been a favorite of mine that God has spoken through and used to direct me lots of times in my life when he doesn't speak to me direct. Yeah, that sounded interesting. And in getting directions, which is what technically, I guess they're called instructions, but you could say instructions or directions would be what the Bible is in the first five books in the Torah, in uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that they guide a society into forming itself into a cooperative unit, one that's ruled and reigning by God. But for us, we have a personal relationship that we need to maintain with the Lord every day because if we go off on our own way, then we're kind of doing our own thing and being our own God. But if we're taking the time to sit still, to consider, to reason with the Lord, as he said, then we find ourselves in relationship as opposed to organization or religion. And so if you're religious about your relationship, then you would spend quality time every day finding those moments that you could, morning, noon, or night, hear what God might say. There shall be a performance, Luke 1.45. My words shall be fulfilled in their season, their fixed appointed time, from Luke 1.20. Matthew Henry says, we must depend upon the performance of the promise when all the ways leading up to it are shut up. <laughs> For all the promises of God are in him, are yea, yes, and in him, amen. And unto the glory of God by us, 2 Corinthians 1.20. And there's a poem that I don't normally read all the poems, but since there's no other part of it, this will help to guide and abide with us in the sense of we get to rap. We get to jab. We get to tap into our God. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, there I go shaking the camera. Again. I guess I'm going to have to do something about that over there. Hmm. What? I don't know. Okay. There shall be a performance of those things that loving heart hath waited long to see. These words shall be fulfilled to which she clings because her God hath promised faithfully. And knowing him, she ne'er can doubt his word. He speaks, and it is done, the mighty Lord. There shall be a performance of those things, O burdened heart, rest ever in his care. In quietness beneath his shadowing wings, await the answer to thy longing prayer. When thou canst cast thy care, then heart, then sing. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'm not really in the poetic mode. And that's okay, because... God, someone asked me, you know, well, when God speaks to you, does he speak like in Hebrew? Does he speak in English? Does he speak with an accent? Does he speak, you know, deep tones? <laughs> you know, how does God speak? <clears throat> Jesus himself is himself. I mean, I don't know if people realize that, but he is the son of God. He is still a unique personality who is the Son of Man. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He was created a body that was formed for him by the Holy Spirit and by God, and that it was fashioned after the likeness of man. And that in being raised and living a normal life that was without sin, he also developed a personality and character traits that are similar to ours. Maybe not quite the same because we're very sinful, and he wasn't. But in the same respect, he still has, just like we will be known, he has a character. He has a personality. He has a style. He has a 
persona that you will recognize and know him. So when God speaks to you, you'll know. You'll know. You know, the the easy answer would be to say, well, you know, there wasn't really an accent, or, well, you know, it wasn't really American, no, it wasn't, you know, but the simple answer is simply that you'll know. Because when God speaks to you, he speaks in a way that you understand. If, praise the Lord, that he audibly speaks to you, which I believe that we all are supposed to get to a place where at least we could say once we heard God speak, that you'll know that voice beyond any shadow of a doubt, because when God speaks to you, it's very moving, to say the least. It goes somehow inside you. It, it just feels more than a word. It's more than a, a filling of the Holy Spirit. It's more than a gift of God. It's, it's something that's just all of you without it being that you know, tingly weird you know kind of like oh boy and oh boy and roll around boy um, feeling but it's all consuming just like God is an all consuming fire Jesus is all consuming when he speaks he will have your total attention and it will challenge you I am sure but if God speaks to you in his word, then praise the Lord. Then that sounds familiar to you because then you apply it to your life as the Holy Spirit gives you inference by way of your knowledge of God and by way of the circumstances of your life that they fit and they coordinate together making a perfect picture of what God would speak to you as he shares through the word to you what he wants to say. If it so be that in circumstance and happen chance that the providence of God, as it used to be called, works out that the coordination of the different divine aspects of how God is moving your life and you see an open door and you pass through it and you've committed your way unto him and your footsteps are ordered of the Lord and the direction is your own heart, then yes, God speaks to you through the circumstances of your life in the way that he can direct you in the way that you should go. And it may be that you only know God in the circumstances and not in the personality and the person of Jesus. But he is still directing you. It may be that you don't know any of those things and you just simply cry out to God. And you're constantly crying out to God and you're always crying out to God. But you know that God hears you and you know that he feels your pain and that he understands where you're coming from and the only thing I can say is that that's okay you know I mean there are those that likewise have all their life may never get out of a crib because they may be for whatever reason inhibited physically from being able to for instance like a disabled child would not be able to do more than what their physical capabilities are which doesn't mean that they don't have a spirit inside that's trapped within the physical limitations of the body so too perhaps perhaps that if you don't have a god that works personally circumstantially or through the intervention of his word in your life that you are spiritually handicapped in some way, that you've been so damaged that God honors your faith in just crying out to him and, and praying and just petitioning him without there being a response. And God forbid that, you know, I should stop God from doing anything that he chooses to do in your life. And so in all these things, even as dreams in one way described, it is God who is at work. He is working in you. And he's trying to develop you towards knowing and responding and hearing his voice. Because what it sounds like is the voice of God. And in the book of Acts, we're told that God spoke to a gentleman who was minding his own business <laughs> and what God did was that he said that Paul Saul of Tarsus was going to be brought to him and that he needed to pray for the person and to heal them and to let him stay there and the interesting thing is if you read it in the book of Acts the man responded with a just normal conversation with God 
he said, well, but Lord, you know, I heard that this man kills people. <laughs> That's a pretty normal conversation. So the next time that you ever have doubt about, oh, I don't know, whether God wants to speak to you, reread the Bible and look at the times he has spoken and the conversations that are going on. They're very every day. Well, there's some holy times. But there's a whole lot of normal times that God just wants to communicate. And he communicates any way he can, the best way he can with you. And with me.